Canadian Arctic Expedition 1913 Ibingnin the <laughs> Inu <laughs> Abaganic 
the man eighteenth century me, the Makwat European could the Manga who put in a Arctic moon cut caricature in the court, the Mahin Makwat Anguniakit who put it in Lokaming, the Makwat Uming Mike Nungut Kayara on the Kangi. Thank you, Lalo, Unalo, Pilisa, Yehemanekot. The Kumnefuk. Unicolor <laughs> Tick <laughs> Kamdunanamigetu, <laughs> A cup of technological Hanudun, Mislitti Langenik, Magot, Nivyakti Langenik, Litore Hiru Dubani. Wunga. The Capit of Maptimon Hove Hakibit, Hanudun, Mislitti Langenik, Magot, Nivyakti Langenik, Litore Hiru Dubani. Tabra, Europe could Paraturimata who put in it, a long October and only our head put, the money in Nivyakin the Hotting, the money Dalker and Yakit in Ilani, who put in it, who put in the Captain Maconinga. Uming Mangnik and Uniak to Alehota in the Lalo in the Vekinja Hotting Taimahin Hule and Uniak to Alehota, Makonega, Uming Mangnik. The Mako to Ming Mait Miklin Yangmata, Kanidin and Ne in the Lat Tabunga Haruka Hain and Uniak to Alehotting Uming Mangnik. The Hipta Makot uming mai tangunya lai kibut alallo angunya koru tamakot agaveni akto allo tamakolo ibakle koruat tamane uming mangnik nekisla mingnik inuga akto chole maskagit angunya koni kangi tamakot amingin nigilo tunyo kahlo gilo tamakot taukheni akto. The Makolo Kupera blew it, Kupera Tamakot, Eurythmi Nakuinikangi, Tamakot, Hazar blew it, 
Und der Karabin der Willow, der Avane 1864 mit, der Manilio 1916 mit, der Makoda hin 1952 years mit, der Brunne 15,000 mit, der Wattabunga, der Jonakot, Kanadier, Nasmin. Der Makoda auch mit mir, der Angebildung, der Mani, der Mingat, Angebildung, der Makolo, mit Kongi, der Angebildung, Dei mahen hukai luteng iglago ra hoteng. Dei mahen tamakot toko tsaga kebluge. Ingi di kang me tamakot uming mai tunay kalla hinigay. Agalan munagam na piyahlige uming mai inigay kilang. My job is to put all the pieces of the puzzle together to make it to make it work. Um, we have, we have research people here, we have inspectors here, we have people training in the tent here, um, Shear and all the different groups, they have different needs, and my job is to make sure everybody's needs are met and stuff. My job starts anywhere from two weeks to a month before we cut up here. So we, we involve the community. When, we get, when I get here to Banks Island, um, we have a meeting with the community, with the HTC and their board, and Harvest Board, and we get start getting things together to put the abattoir together, fuel trucks. Um, the equipment is put away after every harvest, so when we, before we do the harvest, we have to bring the equipment out. We have to make sure the equipment's running. Um, there's a lot of mechanical work, um, site work. We have to get the pens ready. We have to make sure there's enough hay here for the amount of animals that we harvest. Um, this harvest here in 2003, um, we're, going, we're, we're going for big numbers, we're going for a thousand head. Um, so far, we're about, we're about a week into the actual harvest. The herders went out about ten days, seven to ten days before I got here, because it takes some seven to ten days to bring the animals in. Um, they can only move the animals so many miles per day. There's corrals set up out on the land at um, different intervals. So they just move them a little bit, then they rest them, and then they move them more the next day. So it takes about a week to 10 days to bring, bring a, a good sized herd in. And then uh, once, that, once that herd gets here, we have, we have to be set up here to start operations. Inspectors have to be here. The um, inspection team has to have approved our site. and. All, I work with the community to get all that ready so we can start because we don't want an, we, we can't bring the animals in to captivity without being approved. So, so once we get to that step, um, then we employ we employ anybody in Saks Harbor that wishes to work will have a job. Right now we're employing between 15 to 25 people on the job site every day. The abattoir, we have about we have about 15 to 17 people working at the abattoir, um, five people at the shearing facility. Uh, the herding group, there's four main herders that are employed. Right now the herders are out. We have one herd in town now. Um, we've done 189 head we've harvested so far. We have about another estimated 230 to 250 head in the pens, and the herders will be bringing. I, mean, I talked to the herders via satellite phone yesterday, and they said they had three to 400 collected, and they should be here on Thursday. So um, today's operations, we had to set up another pen for the second herd. We can't commingle the two herds together because. The first herd that's come in, we've had them here for seven days already. Those are the ones that have to be harvested first, and then we'll go through the second herd. What I do is I go out with the herders during roundup and make sure they're not stressed animals too bad. To make sure that when they're going from pen to pen, they're at an adequate walking space, and uh, you know they stop and rest them. Make sure they feed them. And when they're here in town, I make sure they, that uh, there's any uh, meat that's not fit for human consumption. I make sure it's utilized. 
like uh, you know the shanks and all those all the parts that you know humans don't usually eat that I make sure it's all used yeah it's my third year with with the with the herders and each year it's been different herders and the last two years it was done in February and it, it was really hard on the animals because there uh, so much snow on the ground but this year it's done in October November you know, there's not so much snow on the ground and it's not so cold this year what's improved is just the weather uh, just the time of year it's not so deep snow uh, yeah crews letting them walk a lot more this year the only thing now with this time of year is it's dark eh? it's getting dark earlier and earlier I'm the abattoir manager. My job consists of training the workers as the uh, moth shots are being put through the slaughtering tent. Uh, they are brought in from the uh, from outside, brought in on a on a roller. From there, they are brought put on a cradle and gone going through the tent. My job is to train all the way down the tent from the time they are uh, skinned, uh, eviscerated, split, and then at the end of the tent they are, they have to be uh, cleaned to uh, make sure that they go through the federal inspection. So until the trainers are all in their place and trained, that's basically my job is to help them along. Once they are all trained, I uh, usually go on the uh, back on the front line where the moss stalks first come in and uh, where we establish basically a steady stream of the animals, of the moss stalks coming through the line. <laughs> Um, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency uh, uh, over, oversees the whole harvest. Uh, before we even come up here, uh, the inspection uh, gets a plan from the harvest company that is uh, detailed as to how they're going to run the harvest and is okayed by um, someone in our agency before they send inspectors up here. Uh, before the inspectors come, um, a, uh, a veterinarian uh, comes and inspects the setup before any animals are here to make sure that it's acceptable. And if it's not, then corrections have to be made before they can start. Then we monitor when they're bringing in the animals and we do what's called an anti-mortem on the animals. We check them over, you know, to see what kind of shape they're in. Uh, if there's something we see, we suggest uh, they correct it, like um, if there's a problem. Um, and we monitor the shooting to make sure that they're shot humanely so that uh, you don't have a, an animal that's wounded and and shot a number of times and uh, so they're handled properly uh, then uh, you know the animal is uh, shot brought into the slaughter tent or harvest tent the head is taken off inspected um, we watch we have we watch and make sure that they uh, follow the sanitary controls, there are sanitary controls within the tent. Certain people can only go in certain areas. 
and we monitor that to make sure you keep thing, like things are kept clean and, and sanitary as possible. But when for the uh, we, we we inspect the head and the viscera, and we look at the lymph nodes to see if they're normal. Um, the uh, lymph nodes in the head, uh, we check the tongue, the muscle. We're looking for cysts from tapeworms. Uh, we're looking for any type of, uh, if you look at the lungs to see if they're healthy, if they have this or disease, we look at the liver uh, and the kidneys, make sure that they're normal. Uh, the uh, heart to check for uh, disease and also for possible cysts as well. After the uh, animal, the carcass is trimmed and I look at it and I decide that it's acceptable, then it is stamped with a stamp. Um, it, it, what it states, the stamp states that it's inspected, it's a federally inspected product. Um, so therefore it can go into federally inspected plants in other parts of the country and also makes it eligible to export to uh, other countries. The uh, uh, without federal inspection, the product would have to stay in the Northwest Territories. But the federal inspection allows it to to go outside the province, uh, the territory, and outside the country. My name is Sigurd Lohman, and I am an animal researcher coming up to Fast Harbor for the Moscow Research. And my job is to aid in collecting the blood. We take three samples from each animal and next when the animal comes up to the tent, to the fire tent, I age the animals through dentition, trying to see how, how far along in the age group they all are. And it helps us choose our animals that we need for our research. After that, I check the body condition for back fat, for muscle, and also then how full their stomachs are, have they eaten well the night before, and also if they have, how much kidney fat they have, see also what condition they are in just prior to slaughter. And we, we collect, we're trying to collect about 150 carcasses. We're, we're going to take sides only on these animals, back to Lacombe Research Center in Alberta. And we ta we're tagging each of the animals separately, and for meat quality, for tenderness. <laughs>